Lesson one, the magic machine. Chris and Cross have invented a wonderful magic machine. They've just finished working on it. Their machine has two openings. If something is put into the opening on the left, it comes out as something different on the right. Our friends are putting in a pair of glasses now. Surprise! A pair of glasses with eyes comes out of the other side. If the things on the left page are put in, they come out looking like the things on the right page. What would you call a machine that works this way? Now, they've changed the controls on the machine. What has it done this time? And what would you suppose would happen if they put the small chicken into the right opening instead of the left? Two cowboys have come riding up on mules. They say they want to get into this machine. What would happen to them? Chris and Cross have shut the lid on the right. Now nothing can enter the sh machine from the right side. What can get out? The controls on the machine have been changed again. What in the world is it doing now? Now, Cross is putting in four glasses of juice. What are going to come out? Here's one that's not too difficult. But notice that the lid on the right is down again. Can you figure out why? Compare the left and right pages and think carefully about what is happening. Our friends are putting six dragonflies into the right side. What will come out? What will happen if they put the remaining dragonflies into the right side again? Uh-oh, they used the machine so much that it finally broke down. Does your head ever feel all confused and muddled like that?
Lesson two, compare and find out. Here are two dolls. Are these two pictures of the same doll? Or are they two different dolls? Let's compare them carefully. Look at the shapes of the faces and the bodies. And what about the hats and clothes? Let's compare one thing at a time. Let's compare these two pictures. You can see that both are dogs. How many ears does each dog have? How are the ears shaped? Now take a look at these two pictures. They're not exactly the same, but they look the same, don't they? What's the same? What's different? From here on, you can think on your own. The more closely you look, the more things you can find that are the same and that are different. Lesson three, dots, dots, and more dots. Our little friend Chris is running the sewing machine. Click, click. Each stitch is connected together. From a distance, the stitches seem like one long line. The holes of the stamp look like a line too, but because they are really holes, they can be easily torn apart. The ants have found a cookie, lined up to take it home piece by piece, they also look like one long line. Did you know that pictures may be drawn by lining up dots? Look at this page up close. You can only see round dots. Now hold it a little distance. A strange face appears.
This picture is made by weaving white and black strips of paper. It is the fox in Aesop's fables. Patterns and fabrics are often woven of colored dots and lines like this. One of our little friends made this face by typing letters on a typewriter. Little black sesame seeds can be eaten. But each seed is also a dot. This picture was made by arranging the seeds. Using a pinpoint, the artist has created many dots to make this picture. It is similar to the sesame seed picture that we saw on the last page. Look at your own photograph under a magnifying glass. It too is made of very small dots. Chris is doing embroidery called cross stitch. He is sewing tiny crosses one by one using different colored thread. Each cross is like one small dot, but if many of them are put together, they look like a painting. This is a picture of Hans Christian Andersen's story, The Little Match Girl. Our little friends are once again using a needle and thread. This time they are putting beads tightly together to make a picture. Completed, it is a picture of a prince riding on a rooster. If you look at pictures in books or magazines under a magnifying glass, you will see that they are made of ti many tiny dots. This is an enlarged view of a part of page 52 of this book as seen under a magnifying glass. The picture on your TV screen is also made up of individual dots. Look at it for a moment with a magnifying glass. You will see thousands of dots lined up shining red, blue, and green. If a picture is divided into parts, like the tiles on a bathroom wall, it can be easily copied part by part. We can think of each part as a dot, then copy it into its own place. There are many, many things that are made of collections of dots, so let's look for them. As a matter of fact, everything in the world, including human beings, is made of millions of dots assembled together. These dots are called atoms.
Lesson four, counting with circles. Here are some children. Let's draw a picture of them. Let's make it simpler. Now a little simpler. Even more simple. The children are now just little circles. Now let's draw the horses. A little simpler, until the horses are just little circles. Now let's make both the horses and the children into little circles. Here they are. We can make anything we want to into little circles. The big elephants, the little ants, the lovely flowers. Look, they all have the same number of circles. The tall, tall trees, the flying birds, the little birdhouses. Look at these pictures from left to right. Their bird cage is full. Now there are this many. Now three. This time, look at the pictures from right to left. Two, then one bird, the cage is empty. Now see if you can figure out what these circles represent. Match the circle or sets of circles to the different things in the pictures below. What do these circles represent in the scene below? Do you see what our little friends are doing? They're making the little circles into squares so they can pile them up. That's so they'll be easier to count.
Each number has a name and a symbol which stands for the number. When you write the number symbol, it makes counting easier. This number is 1. This number is 2. This number is 3. This number is 4. This number is 5. This number is 6. This number is 7. This number is 8. This number is 9. This number is, uh-oh, this square won't fit. Chris and Cross have taken the row of squares and tied them together. Now they can put them into the warehouse next door. This number is 10. This number is 13. You know what this number is, don't you? It's your turn to count. Can you write the numbers? Horses, butterflies, foxes, snails, flowers, children, mice, squirrels, trees, little birds. Let's try again. How many of each thing is there this time? Horses, butterflies, foxes, snails, flowers, children, mice, squirrels, trees, and little birds. Lesson five, counting water. Cross is trying to count these peas. What a bother, he says. It would take years to count them all. In the last chapter, we counted children and horses by making them into little circles. Counting by making things into little circles is fine. But how can we possibly count so many peas? What about salt or sugar? There are too many grains to count in that way. And what about water? Can you think of another way to count salt or water? If we put some salt or water into containers like this, at least we have a way to compare. We can see which container has more water in it. Look at these containers. Which one has more water in it? What about these? We can't tell which of these containers has more water in it just by looking, can we?
if we can't tell just by looking, we can pour the water into other containers that are the same size and shape. But we still can't write down in numbers just how much more water one container has than the other. Well then, let's try putting the water into smaller cups. Now we can see that the pink container had two more cups of water than the green container. We call counting this way measuring. When we measure liquids like water, the container we use is called a measure. When we use little cups as measures, it's hard to measure exactly. So what shall we do when there's a little left over, like this? We could say we have four cups plus a little. But that doesn't tell us much. So we need to agree on a rule. If there's more than half, we'll say it's one cup. If there's exactly half, we'll say it's a cup. If there's less than half, we'll say there's none. Take a look at these measures. Using our rule, which would you say are full? Which are empty? Our little friends used cups to measure the water in a great big wash bowl. There is just like counting peas. How bothersome. Then our friends had an idea. They took 10 cups and tied them together so they could measure all at once. Then they thought up some other measures and finally hit upon the best one yet. This kind of measure was really handy. When they measured the water from the wash bowl again, they counted 68 cups. Our friends measured water from all different kinds of containers in this way. How many cups did each contain? 37 and 46. 